Hello, hon. Welcome to this brief screencast on the Play Bootstrap template. This is a project uh, that I constructed to do basically two things. Create a, um, a template play application that you can use to build your Twitter Bootstrap 3 um, applications. And also a um, template code that did not have all of the check style errors that are present in when you generate an application using the play new command. Um, so if you go to this project you can learn more about the kinds of problems that the default play application generates and um, the code here it's really trivial it just basically you know fixes those check style errors and commits it so that when people start over you don't have to um, you know go through all that. Okay so I built on that project and uh, started with that code base and then added in the Twitter Bootstrap 3 stuff in a, in a, and I created a very simple application. You can see it in these two screenshots, but I'll just go to the live running version. It's going to look like this. It's got the basic um, you know, t Twitter Bootstrap nav bar and it goes to a home page which is the index.scala.html um, and then you, I wrote one additional page just to show you can go back and forth between two pages and how navigation uh, works in that case. Okay, so let me quickly take you through the files. Um, probably the best place to start is with the main uh, .scala.html file. You know there's the really standard play design pattern of having a main.scala.html uh, in, into which you pass your body um, of any particular page and this enables you to have the nav bar and the footer and all that stuff abstracted out into a single template um, which is then rendered with the body that you pass in. Okay, so you can see we're going to pass in a string that indicates the page that we are rendering right now as well as this um, you know body content. Um, and it's just that's completely the way you know all of your play applications do it do it this way. Well, I don't know if all of them do it, but you know, all the ones I've run into basically do this. Um, so we'll display the page title here, okay? And then we have the um, classic um, or the recommended meta tag and a link where I'm going to um, download the, incorporate the bit, Twitter Bootstrap files um, from a um, CDN. Um, a, um, a content delivery network. This one's NetDNA. There's a lot of other ways you can get Bootstrap, but this is kind of you know fairly simple if you don't want to mess with with the files. Um, and then after that, of course, there's always going to be some customizations that you're going to want to make. And so um, the standard way in play is you're going to import the main.css file from the public directory. We'll see that in a minute. And then, of course, if you want a shortcut icon, this is all kind of from this the default play application I left that in there. Then play Twitter Bootstrap 3 wants these HTML5 shims for I Internet Explorer less than nine so that's what that looks like again we're using a content delivery network to get those files. Okay so all that kind of boilerplate stuff over then you know typically in a um, a typical part of the main template is to have the nav bar there and so here's all the default code in Twitter Bootstrap 3 for kind of a standard nav bar. It's fixed to the top. It's inverse. And, you know, you'll play around with this stuff, you know, in your own applications. But this just gives you a sample of how you do it. And um, I show you kind of one pattern for making, deciding which of these links has the class active attached to it based upon the value of the string that we're passing in as a parameter. Okay, so if, if, it, the, if the string that we pass in is home, then this is the link that's going to be active and it's going to redirect using the standard Twitter uh, standard play mechanisms to the index controller method. If we pass in page one, then it's going, the link is going to route to the page one uh, controller method. Okay, and then after all that header stuff is done, then we just um, insert our content and then at the bottom of the body we have two scripts. Um, the first loads jQuery. It turns out that the HTML unit which is what we standardly use in, integration, in the integration test file for um, play 
HTML unit doesn't like versions of jQuery above 1.8.3, at least currently this is as of September 2013. Hopefully that will change and then we won't have to download an older version of jQuery to get our tests to work, but for now we have to do that. And then the second thing is I load in the Bootstrap JavaScript at the bottom here so that all of the JavaScript components for Play are available to us if we want it. Okay, so that's what the main uh, .scala.html file looks like. We're going to load Twitter Bootstrap 3. Okay, let's see how uh, simple page navigation works. As you might expect, we've got this controller class, uh, subclass called application. It's got two static methods in it. It's got the index method, which is going to render this uh, index.scholar.html file. And then I made one more page called page one for lack of like um, uh, imagination. Um, and that we, it's got its page one.scholar.html file. And we're going to render it. And um, it's going to say, welcome to page one. So that's how the controller works. You know, pretty, pretty um, easy. The routes file I had to change. I just basically added one line that says, um, in addition to going to the home page or the top level page, you know, or rendering the top level URL using the index method of the application controller, if someone passes the page one URL, we're going to uh, render the um, we're going to find, figure out how to render that URL using the page one dot, uh, um, method in the application, in the controller class. Okay. Sorry. Um, it's just after lunch. Like my brain is not working very well. Okay. Let's look at the view files. Okay. Now remember we already looked at the main pretty exhaustively. Okay. So that's where our, our, um, nav bar and you know all our files are going to be loaded but then we're going to um, actually from the controller we will invoke either index or the page one and this is very simple it's going to you're going to just for to show you normally controllers do things right so I have the controller pass in a, some some an object it turns out to be just a stupid string message um, to the um, this template that's going to be rendered and basically I just print out the message and there's the body. But normally your controller methods are going to do more complicated things and pass more complicated kinds of data structures into the page that's going to be rendered. I just want to show you, you know, how to do it. Now the key thing here is we're going to, we're going to now render or in, expand or invoke our main.scala.index. Uh, main.scala.html template and we're passing here the page. So this is the page argument, and then this is, I think, the body argument, okay, because it comes after these curly braces. Um, so we're basically invoking main saying our page is home, and this is the stuff that we want to render. We're going to use the standard Twitter bootstrap container class to make sure that things kind of look reasonable. Okay, so that's how index.scala.works. Page one.scala, it looks exactly the same. The only thing we want to do is tell the main uh, template that we're now um, invoking the page one. This is the page one page that we're rendering. And main.scala, of course, needs to know that. Why? Because it's got to figure out which menu bar item needs to be highlighted. Okay, so you remember going back to here, when we're on page one, this has got, this is light. When we go back to home, this is the one that's light. Okay, so now we're seeing that here are the two lines of code that are responsible for, well, actually, this is the this is the little mini bit of, you know, Scala templating language that decides which of those strings, the home or page one, are going to be highlighted when, uh, you know, depending on the page that we've, we've gone to. Okay, all pretty straightforward. Let me get back to my home page to see We've seen how the navbar highlights the current active page. Oh, right. Then there's also the main.css file and public style sheets main.css. And just to note that following, you know, the, the, the Twitter Bootstrap 3, like Twitter Bootstrap 2, has this property that when you use the navbar that's stuck to the top of the page, you have to introduce padding top of at least 50 pixels. I put 70 so that the body has a little bit of space between it and the, and the template. But you got to put this in in order to, when you're dealing with a fixed top 
or you know a fixed uh, nav bar. Okay, so that's where you get that, and then of course you see that loaded in the um, in main.scala.html. Here's where we load that main.css. Okay. All right, so going back up to the top here, it wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, but it's good enough. Oh yeah, so the final thing I wanted to go over is the tests, um, application.test. This hasn't changed very much at all from the, stand, from the default play tests. I'm just checking to see that it contains the home page. And actually it turns out that the integration test hasn't changed very much either. I just go to the top level page and make sure that it contains home page or I go to page one and check to make sure that it contains the string page one. These are pretty lame tests. They pass, they don't do a lot of good. You probably wanna check out the um, play example Fluid Lenium. I'll give a little um, shout out to this particular, um, actually let me, let me do it, find it this way. Okay, so I have a GitHub project called Play Example Fluid Lenium that has a much nicer example of how you do tests along with a screencast using Fluid Lenium and the page object pattern. Um, I'm not showing that in my simple example here because um, I've got to document it elsewhere. All right, that should be enough to um, get you going building your Twitter Bootstrap 3 applications using the Play Framework. Have fun.